the 2009 Wharton India Economic Forum, titled India, The Road Ahead, took place in Philadelphia and brought together CEOs of leading Indian companies, investors, heads of non-profit organizations, sports celebrities, and Bollywood stars to discuss where India is headed in an age of economic uncertainty. Indian Knowledge at Wharton brings you one-on-one -on -one conversations with these leaders. Governor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So much has been written about the world financial crisis and the uh, recession, the greatest crisis since the Great Depression. Uh, how do you think it has affected uh, the Indian economy and the people of India? Um, I don't think it's really affected uh, the Indian economy and, uh, and the, and the, the 1.2 billion people of India. Uh, it's, what's really happened is that uh, suddenly um, demand has fallen in India partly because of domestic reasons and partly because exports are down because there's no foreign demand or a re reduction in foreign demand. And that has its sort of multiplier effect in the whole Indian economy. So just like the rest of the world that seems to have fallen off a cliff in the last six to eight months, uh, it was certainly falling, but in the six to eight months, I think the drop has been incredibly uh, steep. I've never seen anything like this in my uh, pretty long career now. Um, and so it is worrying because we don't know where we are all going. Uh, and that means not only the Western developed world, or it also means uh, India and other developing countries because we've never had a situation of this, uh, this magnitude before. But India being self-sufficient in so many things, it's really a self-contained economy. We depend on world trade for just about, I think, uh, I may not have my figures uh, uh, quite accurately, but about 20 to 23 percent um, of the Indian GDP is accounted for by foreign uh, trade. So 75 percent of the country uh, of our business uh, uh, business oriented GDP, agriculture and so on is insulated and is not really affected. And our banks uh, are pretty solvent. Uh, uh, they've not had the uh, uh, NPAs or non-performing assets which Western banks have had. We've had our own uh, problems with non-performing assets, but they've been minor, a bit in property, a bit in car loans, personal finance, things of that nature, but nothing of the magnitude where you where you have uh, banks that need to be nationalized or, or saved or, um, uh, or rescued. Um, so I think India has been pretty well insulated, uh, and we hope that it can continue to be so, um, so. And I think the government of India has followed a sensible policy in not panicking. They've also uh, 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 loosened the taps uh, on money supply uh, to a considerable extent. So industry uh, has enough uh, finance available. A lot of us complain about it because it's, uh, uh, it's nice to complain and to egg the government on uh, to, loose, to open up the taps further, which is going to be necessary. And I think just like the United States, um, uh, you've, you've got to take uh, a long-term view on this. Yes, your uh, letting money supply expand dramatically uh, through a whole series of measures, uh, but, uh, and that it may create inflation in the long run, yes, that's probably a given, but we see no signs of that yet. So let's worry about uh, perhaps a lesser problem then than worry about it right now. And I think the problem now is to get the world economy going, to get our own domestic economies going, but in a sensible, balanced way. None of the excesses that you've uh, seen um, in, in the past decade or so, both uh, overseas and even in India. And for example, I think the excesses in the property market, uh, uh, for example, and even in the stock market, you know, valuations had reached ridiculous levels um, and, uh, uh, and, and, and a reaction was bound to happen. Uh, what about the insurance market? Has that been affected at all? The insurance market has only been affected, I think, uh, in terms of uh, people going a bit slow on using their savings uh, to put into other types of savings. Insurance is also a type of saving. If, you've, if you're just taking plain, uh, simple life cover, that's not a saving, that's just pure insurance. But there are schemes which are attached to perhaps uh, investment schemes, debt schemes, uh, equity schemes, mixed schemes. Um, and uh, people are slowing down on, on that for sure. I, I know that the Tata Group has been involved with AIG, and I, and I wonder if uh, AIG's problems with uh, the subprime crisis in the U.S. has had any effect. In fact, it would be very helpful to understand the A Tata AIG venture and, and to see whether it has been any effect. Okay. 
Uh, I won't obviously uh, speak about AIG uh, per se and the problems that it faces in the United States. It would be wrong for me to comment on that. Uh, but certainly in terms of our joint venture um, uh, in India, uh, it's a joint venture, uh, two joint ventures, one on the life side and one on the general side, general being non-life, uh, you know, fire, property, casualty. Um, and uh, both uh, companies uh, have an equity holding uh, from AIG of 24% and Tata Sons of uh, uh, 20 uh, of uh, 74%. Uh, sorry, did I say 26%? Yeah, 26% and uh, Tata's of 74%. So we have a majority holding, and we and the, the capital is uh, the, the companies are properly capitalized. They are properly regulated by the insurance um, regulator. We meet. Uh, um, uh, 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 solvency norms um, uh, far beyond what the, the regulator requires. The normal regulation says that you must have 150% uh, uh, solvency ratio. We are uh, in the life company, uh, probably near 300% uh, and the, uh, or oh, sorry, perhaps 250% uh, and in the general company, 200%. So we are well uh, capitalized. There's nothing to worry. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we've been very, very, uh, uh, happy at the response that we've had from our existing policyholders, uh, because as far as they are concerned, they see the Tata name. The IG name uh, may be known uh, uh, significantly in, uh, uh, in, in the Western world or in other countries. Uh, it's not; it's relatively unknown. The IG has made a good uh, start at building their brand in India. Uh, unfortunately, these events have happened over the last uh, six, nine months. Uh, uh, which may uh, uh, leave them uh, a bit bruised and damaged, uh, but it but has been a great international name. So we've had no problems with our AIG partnership um, as such. They've brought a lot of domain knowledge uh, to the business. We've brought in local knowledge. We've brought in uh, lo local uh, uh, marketing, uh, uh, in-depth marketing skills, uh, which I believe uh, make for a successful combination. In fact, maybe uh, a lot of people don't know, but uh, uh, before uh, uh, the insurance industry was nationalized, uh, Tata's had an insurance company in, in, in its fold called the New India Assurance Company. It was founded by um, Sir, uh, I, th I think it was Sir uh, Dorab Tata. Um, and in the 1930s, it was founded in the 1930s, and at the time of nationalization in the 60s and on the bout of nationalization in the 70s, we were the largest um, private sector insurance company. Uh, so we have some background, uh, some uh, legacy, uh, uh, the thing we just tried to reclaim our legacy. Oh, right. Uh, and I know you, in the course of your career with the Tatas, you've also been involved with Tata Motors, yes. which, which has been in the news quite a bit. Uh, I believe the Nano is, uh, you know, uh, about to be launched uh, r relatively soon. Uh, given the auto, uh, auto crisis in the U.S., I wonder how you see the source of the crisis here and whether you know, the Tata's expertise in the auto industry might offer any lessons. That would be a bit presumptuous to offer something to the United States, but uh, but anyway, uh, firstly, in terms of the the Nano, yes, it is going to be launched uh, in two days uh, on the 23rd of March uh, in Mumbai. And by launching, it means it's really going to be available uh, for the general public to start bookings and uh, hopefully deliveries. The original plan was, of course, that we would uh, be starting off from a single mother plant um, in Singur, and uh, we would have been uh, we would have had nanos um, in the streets of India or the roads of India on the roads of India um, uh, six months ago. Uh, but these delays have happened. Now we are uh, using other plants uh, uh, in, in, in Tata Motors to produce uh, the nano, and the production scales won't be very large to start off with. Uh, but as soon as the uh, plant in Gujarat and Sanan uh, becomes available uh, and is um, fully kitted up um, with equipment and commercial runs have happened, then I think uh, we'll see some volume sales. Do you think you might ever uh, sell the Nano in the U.S.? I would say not for the foreseeable future. It's difficult to say never, uh, or should one should never say never. Um, but I think it's it's unlikely that the United States would be uh, on our priority list. Certainly Europe would be on, a, on our priority list. Um, and again, when I say priority list, I'm talking of, uh, uh, say, three years ahead, three years from now. By the way, I'm no longer associated with uh, Tata Motors directly, uh, but only at the group level, whatever uh, is public knowledge or semi-public knowledge I can perhaps share <laughs> with you. 
But Mr. Tata himself at the Geneva Motor Show made a public statement, I believe, um, um, uh, that uh, the Nano uh, he hoped would be available in Europe at a reasonable time in the future. Uh, when he was pressed, he said maybe three years. Um, and, um, and again, somebody asked, uh, would it really be a $1,000, uh, sorry, a $2,000 car? Um, um, and uh, he said, no, I don't think so, because we'd have to meet, uh, as it is, it meets uh, pretty stringent uh, safety norms in India. Um, and, uh, and in fact, uh, for Europe, the norms today are not very different from the Indian norms. but. Uh, in the expectation that there'd be higher norms as we go along, um, three years he thought was a good enough period in which to get the nano up to European standards for sure. And the price, uh, again, he was pressed on that. And he said, well, if you want me to give you an approximate price, I'd say it's probably $5,000. <laughs> Over the course of your career, what would you say is the biggest leadership challenge you've ever faced? And how did you overcome it? And what did you learn from it? Well, I think uh, you you face uh, uh, problems and crises all the time, so I, I wouldn't pick any particular one. But I'd just say that uh, we went through a very difficult time in Tata Motors um, in uh, 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 soon after we launched uh, the Indica, um, uh, uh, when which was India's first really uh, uh, domestic uh, domestically designed and engineered and manufactured car. Um, and it was not a creation of, of the cars problems, it was a creation of demand. Demand just collapsed in the, uh, in, 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 in the economy, so it affected the truck business. And Tata Motors at that time was really a truck company. It's now that it can proudly say it's also a car company. But at that time it was very much a truck company. And we were, undergoing the transformation into being an automobile company also by creating a separate uh, vertical in our organization. But to change the mindset of people uh, to go from a truck manufacturing, uh, uh, manufacturing and quality uh, mindset to a car thing was probably the key. And uh, I bore the brunt of it uh, because uh, not that I was involved in manufacturing at all or quality, but because I was in charge of my, uh, my executive directorship uh, contained one uh, uh, one area, and that was overseas exports uh, or business overseas, whether it was exports or local assembly plants, things of that nature. And the key problem was quality. Um, and uh, and I think uh, Mr. Tata recognized that uh, uh, at that time straight away that uh, we had to improve the quality. And so we decided to, to cut down our exports until we got our quality right. And in certain markets, uh, because you see, we had this great dream uh, that yeah, with, with the Indica, it's again a bit like the Nano. It's, it was going to be a cheap, uh, cheap only in terms of price, uh, but value for money car. Uh, the Nano today is, you know, everybody keeps calling it the cheapest uh, car in the world, but I, I would rather call it the least expensive car in the world, and it's going to deliver real value for money. Uh, because, uh, again, to come to the narrow for a quick second, um, uh, contrary to everybody's views that, uh, oh, it's just a rickshaw or uh, uh, something like that with, with paneling, no, it's really a full-blooded car. It's no different from, uh, you, we joked about it earlier about the Volkswagen. Uh, when I bought a Volkswagen here, uh, was it you or somebody else? No, sorry. Okay. Um, uh, uh, as a student for $2,000 at that time, uh, so we are reverting back to a $2,000 uh, car, uh, uh, but a modern car, uh, but a smaller engine, of course, uh, but, uh, but the price of the dollar has uh, fallen considerably. Uh, so in effect, it's an even more efficient and a, a much greater value for money car uh, today. And so the quality issue, I would say, um, um, uh, at Dara Motors was, uh, was, was a major issue. And then, of course, the recession hit us very badly. So uh, the, uh, the car side was being supported for a while in its infancy by the truck side of the business in terms of uh, uh, profitability and revenue. Uh, and uh, uh, so it was a bad time those two years, but we came out of it very well. The, the economy revived. You know, it's, uh, in the automobile industry, it cycles. And then the lesson to be learned really is that you don't overbuild capacity, just an expectation that it's going to be a vertically rising market and that you've had uh, four good years, so therefore the next four years are also going to be good and the four years after that. So all you do is just say it's a five to six year cycle and just plan for that. And in, in the recessionary conditions, then you start maybe 
putting up capacity, which will meet the demand when the next boom starts. Uh, but, uh, but, but this is a mistake that we all make. Uh, and we really started expanding our capacity. So we had a big financial crunch. Uh, okay. One last question. I, I know that uh, one of the things that concerns you a lot is the problems that India faces. Uh, with, of all the problems that the country has, uh, which are, are you, uh, which do you regard as the as, as the uh, ones that affect you most personally, and and what do you think can be done about them? I certainly think. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, you know poverty defines a whole host of things. So poverty, whether you, it's poverty of. Uh, uh, of, of one's lifestyle or, 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 or the basics of life, poverty of education, the paucity of uh, uh, you know, basic electricity, availability of uh, electricity to live uh, comfortably or use any, uh, any, any equipment, uh, the, the whole manufacturing side of our industry. So it's all interlinked. Um, I, I would say that uh, today, if one can alleviate uh, basic human poverty and misery in India, through whatever it means, it doesn't matter, even if the government gives out massive doles, but if it reaches the poor, and they have the ability then to spend it on useful things, and it doesn't mean that uh, suddenly the village girls start uh, applying uh, lipstick and uh, uh, things of that nature, but it's used f in, a, in, a, in, a, in a focused way. Um, and, and, there's, and there's hunger in India. It's not as if uh, there's no hunger in India. Yes, we've had a wonderful food revolution uh, and a milk revolution, and uh, all these things we are supposed to be self-sufficient um, uh, in food grains, but rea the reality is that uh, it doesn't go down to the masses. And that two thirds that's in the villages or in, uh, in, in fact, in the Slumdog Millionaire uh, film, uh, slums of Bombay, Dharavi, and so on, it doesn't reach them. But it reaches them because they are trying, striving to get out of it. Uh, they're working harder, they've got the willpower, they've got the hope. And I think just like those two kids, they'll, do, they'll win it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.